AM 1220, it is 107, 88 degrees, burning degrees outside. Actually, not as bad as it's been over the past couple of days. Myself, Bobby Marqueso, and, and uh, Patty. Hey-o. Patty O. Patty O. Patty O. Patty O. Patty O. That's me. Yeah, awesome. Good to have you here. And once again, I'm faced to look over and not see Jason. Speaking of which, I believe he's actually calling in right now. No. Yeah. He told me after the I know. first break. And so I just got the memo and I see him popping up right well, here. That's too bad. So <laughs> sad. And then Lou. Not yet. He's kind of abandoned me. This is true. I'm just saying. And then, you know, there's no Matt Denny. I mean, what is like I come here and nobody's here. And for like a good ten seconds or so, I'm gonna be gone for just a sec. Well, well I have to bring in our host. Your host? What do you mean? Oh, for the, on the our phone. host on the phone. Yes, One gotcha. Sec. Our host. He's not my host. I'm just saying. Well. Hey, um, so I thought. So I thought what we would do is, you know, Jason likes to always have some day in history. So I brought up my own day in history, and uh, the pyramids. So here's here's my version. The pyramids were older to the Romans than the Romans are to us. Think about that as you're driving down the road. The pyramids were older to the Romans than the Romans are to us. Sir, if you could not interrupt me while I'm doing Dayton history, I'd appreciate it. And during, He actually looked up some history for you, Jason. And during, he actually did. Yeah, during World War II, a great Dane named Juliana was awarded the Blue Cross Medal in 1941 after she extinguished an incendiary bomb by peeing on it. Huh. Wait, 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 wait. Say that again? What part did you understand? <laughs> Diffused a bomb or peed I, I on didn't it? I which understand any of it. Which was Just difficult. <laughs> a dog named Juliana was awarded the Blue Cross Medal because she extinguished a bomb by peeing on it. Oh, wow. wow. Very brave. Okay. I mean, Very impressive. And, and also and impressive. The, the sheer, yeah, I mean, being able to pee under pressure like that is would, pretty impressive. Would you do it? Could you do it? Actually, that's some more of that. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, even if I could, even if I had thought of that, could you actually pee on command in order to? I don't know. To, Listen, to the... if there were a bomb near you, I'd walk up and pee on it for you. <laughs> I would do that for you. Oh, Jason I, Downs hey. joining us on the uh, on the phone because apparently he's living the life of luxury <laughs> somewhere. Where are you at now? You're going on a big I, trip, I, right? It was a. Yeah, we're, I, I took the kids, jumped in the car, we drove cross country. We are now in New York, and I'm looking at some beautiful countryside in upstate near Woodstock. It's 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 gorgeous. So mm. can't thank you enough, Bobby, for for holding down the fourth there. And, yeah, and yeah. Patty St. Patrick, thank you. Of and course. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we have, I mean, you know, here's another episode of Common Ground. What can we say? Uh, it is, it's Monday. What's the date, Bobby? Did you already cover all that? I, I really I did. Was, 21st, was, it's 88 was, degrees, was, high KHTS, 98.1. Okay. Thank you, thank you. I was sitting on hold waiting for, waiting for you guys to pick up. Because you told me you'd call in after the break, and I did not want to be interrupted. Oh, so see, I told I Patty. We were talking about our special guest. Our special guest today is Nolan Rollins. I thought you were asking when we were going to be calling him in so i no, I, apologize. I didn't even know we had a guest are you kidding me i just i planned on doing the whole show myself because nobody told me anything <laughs> to be Wait, fair i'm also plan? i'm also caught with bobby right now where i'm just like oh okay no, what, I, I'm so, what, what did you plan i'm so proud i feel like a proud papa you know what nothing <laughs> i that's what i do right i when i did this once upon a time you just kind of go in and i mean you have a a couple of things, but I, I was going to talk about how my son almost drowned over the weekend. I was going to oh talk about Father's oh, Day. We can, talk, we can talk about all that. No, listen, that. I don't want to interrupt apparently the schedule you have going on right now. Not not at all, no. Okay. I, all I, I, was, I was counting on you to, to, to carry this, I uh, this ship across the, the, the Delaware for us. But, um, yeah. but, yeah, no, after the first break, we'll welcome our guest, our, our political correspondent, Nolan Rollins. Okay. Uh, and, and in the meantime, we can talk about what in the world happened to your son. Why, why did he almost 
Well, well, wait. Before we do that, let me just say that our show is sponsored by Denny and Company LLP Certified Public Accountants. We love Matt Denny. Why? Because he makes your life less taxing. <laughs> so you can set up an appointment with him at DennyLLP.com. And, of course, the law offices of Lou Espen, when experience counts, count on experience at EspenLaw.com, E-S-B-I-N-L-A-W.com. So now you can go back to your regular regular Regular, schedule. Regular schedule program. I looked up history stuff. Like on this day, a British couple jokingly invited Queen Elizabeth to their 2012 wedding anniversary, and uh, she actually showed up. That is so cool. The queen is like, I'm down for that. <laughs> That's how she sounds. Oh, I'm down for that. I think that would Honestly, be splendid. Because... Bring the corgis. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I had, a, you know, I had a lot of stuff. Anyway, so my son. So they finally opened the pool where, uh, where I live. And, you okay. know, it's been like a year and a half. And they, they went through whatever safety precautions that they need to go through, even though chlorine kills whatever bacteria and stuff. But anyway, so we finally got to go in. He jumped in the deep end, and I'm sitting over. I don't, I don't really go swimming. I don't like swimming so much. But I'm, so I'm over kind of relaxing. I'm on my, my computer taking care of some work. And then he comes up, and I hear him yelling, you know, ah! And I think there was a help me in there. But, you know, kids are kids. And he jokes like that all the time. And I'm like, oh, Liam. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, well, I, I just kind of ignored it, you know? <laughs> and then it started, there's a certain tone or something in a child's voice when they're real, right? There's a mm-hmm. little, there's a mechanism inside of a parent's stomach that goes off. And you know wait a minute, I think he's serious. And that's when he's like, no, help me. And he was very serious. I jumped in the pool, fully clothed. And it, it's only like six feet, but, you know, he can't touch the bottom. And and goggles, apparently his goggles filled up with water. He couldn't see, couldn't really tread water. He's had swimming lessons, but I think in that moment he, he kind of forgot. So I just jumped in with everything, and I held him up and and calmed him down, you know. But he was crying. He was wow. panicking. I'm like, we need a safe word. There has to be a word so that when, like, you're serious, I know that so you're Daddy serious. So Dad doesn't laugh at you while you're down. So Dad doesn't go, oh, son, you know. Oh. Gosh. Because, like I say, we, you know, he just jokes. He yells a lot and. You know, stop joking. My problem with safe words is that I can I can never remember them. Yeah, so. I just said seriously. I just told him say seriously, you know, or I'm serious or something like that to let me know if he's really in okay. trouble. And uh, and if he doesn't say that word, then you know, see ya. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> see ya. I'm kidding. Bye. <laughs> what do you want from me? He didn't say I the mean, word. I, what am I, I to blame? That, that is that's. That's always it was uh, it was a little sc- scary, you know. And then poor guy. Uh, later at night, after we'd gone to bed, I, I woke up. He was kind of crying, and um, and I, I yeah, I'm half asleep, and I didn't go in. Usually, if it's something again that is bothering him, he'll come in and wake me up, right? But he never did, because you don't know if he's dreaming or if it's real or whatever. Once again, just laying there while my son's crying out for help, and. Uh, I asked him the next morning, you know, what was going on, or did you have a bad nightmare? And no, he he had thought about, I guess, in kind of his twilight sleep, he had thought of it, uh, about that pool incident again. You oh, know, and the poor goodness, guy was yeah. crying. It really affected him. But as soon as he calmed down, you know, we got off to the side of the pool, and uh, then he kind of sat down. He's like, I don't want to go in again. And that's when I said, uh-huh. you know, no, you got to go back in. It's really important. And so he went back in, but he just sat on the stairs. And so I, you know, I said, we got to, we have to go all the way in, pal. You know, I said, it's really important. And so I got in with my clothes again and I just walked in the pool with him and, and, uh, we're fine. So he went again yesterday. This was on Saturday. He went in again yesterday and was back to doing handstands and, you know, 
jump it in the pool okay, and that good. kind of stuff. That's so it was really important. Good, good. Yeah. So you did the right thing. That I did, yeah. Been, like a you know afterwards. A really good a really good parenting, you know, moment. After. Well, it's that, you know, fall off the horse, get back on type of behavior, isn't Definitely. it? Or, you know, Definitely. you just, I mean, you have to. And so, yeah, gosh, I felt really, he's so sensitive, you know, and it breaks my heart when he, when he goes through a rough time, but you have to be strong, don't you? And say, no, no, come on, we got to go get in the pool and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, it's really, I know that's, it's really that's weird. the hardest thing I think about being a modern parent like that, you know, because, and we talk about this all the time. We talk about, are we, are we doing too much for them? Are we, you know, creating sort of soft entitled, you know, right. uh, de- dependent you know, kids by doing too much for them? Because that's obviously our instinct is to protect them. Whereas, you know, we look at the generations of parents before us and it was very much, like you said, you know, <laughs> get up, dust yourself off, you yeah. know, and, and hop on the horse again kind of thing. And, and I don't know. It's, it's hard to, to find that balance. It's hard to sometimes know if it's, if it's a moment to, to, to exercise that sort of tough love or if it's a moment to uh, be sensitive. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's, that's hard. I try to – yeah, I try to work both of it in. I mean, it wasn't a go get back in the pool now, you know, type of thing. I'm right. always gentle with him when I speak to him and just explain, honey, this is really important. Trust me, please. You know, mm-hmm. I'll go in mm-hmm. with you, but we've got to go back in. We have to, you know, and make it like it's, there's no choice. We have to do this, you know, type of thing. Yeah. And it's kind of like coaxing him back in, but I'm never, I don't think I'm ever, you need to do this now unless it's you know, clean up his room that I've already asked him to do 10 times. And Now, do you yeah. use that precise voice that you just used on me? Or is it, uh, you know, slightly... Which one? The yeah. one when you first came on or the one I just did? The one you just did. Because the one when you first came on, that's a different <laughs> voice, isn't it? Altogether, isn't <laughs> <Yes>. it? <laughs> exactly. That's so... What I ask because I would, yeah, I would definitely get back in the pool if you used that second voice. The second voice I always use. My my <laughs> wife always says because whenever somebody's high strung like that or they're they're kind of going ballistic or something at the moment, I go and I just always go into this easy voice. I don't know what it is. I, it just mm-hmm. automatically happens. And she says, "Stop talking to me like I'm a rabbit dog." But it's I can't help it. That's all. When you know when she's going crazy, I'm like, babe. Don't, please, you don't have to yell. Let's, you know, I tell yeah, me what yeah. I did, right? You know what I mean? Just like real soft and stop talking to me like I'm a rabid dog and I can't win, right? If I'm like, okay, you, lady, <laughs> <laughs> tell me what the hell's going on, you know? You, you can't kind, win. calm, and collected. Kind, yeah. Beautiful lady. Exactly. Um, so she hates that voice, but I've also had feedback that... You know, that's the kind of voice that, that people want. Well, I mean, I guess it comes from a lot of life coaching and when I did that before, right? It's just you don't get yeah. anywhere to screaming matches, right? You're both driving well, down the road. You, are, you and, are also a police officer. Well, you yeah. Know, you've got to use, you know, use that sort of let You do. Like, man, kind of look, yeah. buddy, what are you doing? Because here's the thing. If you're both driving down a dark road and one person turns their high beams on, well, a lot of people turn their high beams on. Now everybody's blind, right? So somebody has to kind of, you know, talk calmly. But like I say, it just and maybe that's it with the training or something. I guess it just just kind of naturally comes comes forward. So yeah. Anyway, so we we've got a couple things <clears throat> to do, right? I mean, one of which is to to help Patty, you know, with some of his pickup lines this week, oh, that, like we no. promised. <laughs> yeah. Um. But but um. But I definitely want to hear some more history from you. I, I, I'm so impressed that you that you you know backed me up like that. What else do you have? Aside you know, I've been doing this for practice. 25 years, right? So <laughs> if it, if they, if I was in like my third month, then you could be like, oh my god, Bobby, nicely I done. I'm, I'm, I'm totally serious. Uh, but I am serious about wanting to hear what else you found. Um. Well, before let, we had to break, you know. Yeah. Um, let me see. The Avengers <gasps> were also a team of Jewish assassins who hunted Nazi war criminals after World War II. Ooh. Wow. 
For reals? Yeah, for reals. Huh. And uh, uh, now, were the <coughs> Avengers the Marvel comic based on the real Avengers? Don't ask questions. <laughs> I, oh, okay. What do I know? Well, really, I was asking Patty because it sounded like he sort of knew a lot about it when he gave that. <laughs> but haven't you noticed that about Patty? <laughs> he sounds like he knows a lot. <laughs> about everything and then when you start digging a little deeper it's like oh <laughs> dig the knife harder into my chest so why don't you crack a little bit uh, when you when you dig a little deeper you find out he doesn't eat vegetables you know that sort of thing <laughs> i right. eat vegetables jason come on it's okay if you don't i do listen buddy how come you don't want to eat vegetables it's just something we have to do pal maybe we could just eat vegetables together here come here you know what? Now that he said that in that voice, I really want to eat vegetables more now. It's, it's, I feel like having a carrot. Like that, that same, same. Why do yeah, I want no, broccoli? That, that is very effective. Very effective. It can be, unless you're talking to your wife that way. Um, Mark Twain, in this day in history, said God created wars so that Americans would learn geography. What? <laughs> what? What? Oh, man, and it still didn't work. You, it still didn't work. Here's one that backs you and I up. This would be you and I. Ben Franklin was trusted to write the Declaration of, uh, wasn't trusted to write the Declaration of Independence because it was feared he had sneak jokes into it. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that I buy. All right, buy these two one. men with white wigs walk into a, into an establishment. Right. <laughs> okay, 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 yeah, so... <laughs> uh, One of them's I mean, flying a kite, a, see? <laughs> he was a brilliant, brilliant writer, uh, no, no doubt. And so I can understand why they considered asking him, and I can also understand why they, why they finally landed on uh, Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not as funny, the Declaration of Independence, though, I find. No, you wouldn't call In it my a, reading a, a work of, of, of comedy, no. Yeah, I, I was not amused. Um <laughs> it got panned by the by the critic. You know, when it, it, did. <laughs> it did. Not as there amusing. Is, I, I didn't laugh once. Not once. Right. <laughs> Washington's like, I give it a two thumbs down. <laughs> this should, should have had Ben Franklin write that thing. Yeah. Oh man, he would have livened it up. <laughs> Four score and some time ago. Ah! <laughs> that would have been awesome. Um. The oldest known beware of the dog sign, it actually has a, a mat with a with a kind of a pyramidish looking canine on it. Two thousand years old. Beware of the dog. Two thousand? Two thousand years ago. Beware of the dog. Wow. Cave Canum. Oh, wow. Cave Canum. In my wow. in my okay. expanse of Greek. <laughs> in Latin. Yeah. Um <laughs> And uh, I don't know if that's funny. I'm I'm reading as I go. Um, oh, and then uh, and then Mark Twain once again. Civilization began when slavery was abolished. Amen. Mm. Amen. All right. Well, that that's a good one for Juneteenth, right? We it just, is. Uh, we just we just passed the oh 19th my God. of June. Can I tell you something about Juneteenth? Oh my God! Yeah. So I'm originally, so I'm originally from Colorado. Mm -hmm. I moved up to South Dakota, and lived there for 12 years. That's where I had my morning television show on on the NBC affiliate out there, and did my radio stint. Mm -hmm. Just found out because my wife is back there for three weeks. Her mom got a knee replacement. As, as far as I know, they put it on the right way. They, it's not like her leg goes up to her <laughs> nose now. Um, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I know. And so, just found out that they are the only state, the last state, who has not voted to make Juneteenth a holiday. South Dakota. South Dakota. And I would like to just call that out right now and say, what, what, what happened? Is that because, <clears throat> I mean, because look, I, I'll tell you, we just drove through South Dakota. Yeah. And there were, there were plenty of hours where you could look. As far as you can see ahead of you and as far as you can see behind you, mm -hmm. and no cars. Mm -hmm. We drove through a town with a population of four. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. Yeah, that's uh, way out there. Uh, so That's just in between the West River, right, as you were going from Rapid City up to Sioux, to Sioux Falls? 
it, 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 it was on the way to Sioux Falls, yeah. But, uh, yeah. We went to Rushmore in the Badlands. And yeah, that, yeah. Um, nice, good. Yeah. Uh, so could it possibly be? And I'm just I'm just looking out for for you folks from South Dakota. I just almost could spurted it off. Could it just be because they're bringing the company? They haven't gotten around to it. No, haven't gotten around to it. Who's like, oh, I forgot that was on my desk. No, it's because they are the way they are. See, I have to. I have to. Uh, I'm. You know, I don't. I just keep my. We, we have myself. to curtail no our. Yeah. We do have to curtail, um, and just to let you know that the views and such are not necessarily those reflected here at, by the personnel at KHTS. Of course. <laughs> I love how they put a warning at the beginning of our show now. I love that. Anyway, Is so it, that's just Patty. 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 Did you yeah. put that warning before every show? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So it's not just us. No, it's it's, it's uh, like every show. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. I would, uh, I wouldn't have been surprised if it were just us, but uh, but so every that's what he meant. Uh, every one of our shows, yeah, every show. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so we should probably take a break and, and have our special guest on. Yeah, uh, we right. should stick around for for Nolan Rollins here. Speaking uh, of June of Juneteenth, this is a gentleman who has done a tremendous amount for. Uh, the African Americans in this country, and worked with many politicians, governors, senators, uh, you name it, as an advisor. So stick around. He's always got something really interesting to say. Uh, right here on Common Ground, KHTS 98.1 FM and AM 1220. And now, a cooking tip from Keith Mowry from Bob's Country Meats. Ribs were made for the barbecue, but here's a great cooking tip. The best way I like to cook the ribs is in the oven, cover them about an hour. 350, then put them on the barbecue for about 15 to 20 minutes, turn them a few times just to get them nice and brown. Ribs, chicken, tri-tip, pork chops, turkey, steaks, even exotic game like buffalo and ostrich. For the tastiest ribs in town, visit Bob's Country Meats on Soledad in Canyon Country. I'm Kirk Stinson with Plumbing by Kirk. As a plumber, I've pretty much seen it all. From clogged drains to leaky pipes, running toilets, broken water heaters, broken garbage disposals, and yes, some stuff you've probably never even seen, or want to know about for that matter. I've installed new drains and natural gas lines for barbecues, answered hundreds of emergency calls even on holidays. Don't forget about our seasonal drain cleaning and preventative maintenance. My team and I do that too. No issue is too big or too small, residential or commercial. Call now for estimates on new drain installations, old drain replacements, and water heaters. 263-6519 or log on to plumbingbykirk.com. Thinking of buying a house and want a really low interest rate? Owning has a special for home purchases, where Owning pays all your closing costs and the rate in APR is an unheard of 1.875% for a 15-year fixed mortgage with 20% down. This is the craziest low rate for a mortgage with no closing costs that Owning has ever done. 1.875% rate in APR. Heck, we're almost paying you to live in a new house. Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com to see if you qualify for this crazy low 1.875% rate. That's a fixed rate loan at 1.875% with no closing costs. Call 8332-OWNING now because 1.875 could go away at any time. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act, subject to credit approval. Offer assumes the use of lender's choice as grow and title services. Call 833-858-8006 for terms and conditions. That's 8332-OWNING or owning.com. 8332-OWNING or owning.com. Join the Canyon Theater Guild for in-person workshops for children up to 17 years old this summer. Kids become their favorite fairy tale characters in Character Matters Return of the Fairy Tale Advice Council. Juniors take to the high seas in Dave the Brave and the Pirateers, facing crocodiles, sirens, and the notorious pirate Lady Legs. Be our guest with the stars and Disney's Beauty and the Beast Jr. Call 661-799-2702 or visit canyontheater.org. When was the last time you had a business insurance checkup? That long, eh? It's most likely Glen Terry time for you and your business. Glen Terry has been a Santa Clarita resident since 1980 and has deep roots in the community. 22 years in the insurance industry, a trusted commercial insurance specialist with LBW, licensed in 50 states, there's nobody I'd trust more. Call Glen Terry today and set up your free business insurance checkup at 661-702-6005. Glen Terry sticks to the mission, not the co-mission. Yeehaw! Your hometown station, KHTS.
And welcome back, everybody. It's 98.1 FM and 1220 AM, KHTS 132 right now. About 88 degrees, slightly cooler, thank goodness, from our week of hundreds. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be days and days and days and days and days, like it has been before, but it was not. And so we got uh, pretty lucky. And uh, so I'm Bobby Marqueso. This is Common Ground. Jason Downs calling in because he couldn't be bothered to come inside the station. <laughs> Um, and I'm just you know, outside in the parking lot. That's yeah. yeah really he's outside in the parking lot. I just like to drive close <laughs> and not actually come in. So that's fine. <coughs> Diva. No, we, <coughs> Diva. So of, <laughs> I'm good with that. We drove through uh, Nevada and, and and Utah, and we hit 118 degrees at one point. Speaking Oof. of, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it gets really bad up there because Utah and Arizona and all those areas. So yeah, so so who's anyhow. our? You have a special guest you we do, that you we didn't do, tell me about because <laughs> apparently still couldn't be bothered to tell me about the format of the show. My gosh, that's fine. I just like to keep you on your toes and mm -hmm. surprise you. And, and no, that's you, awesome. You, you know, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what what had you planned? What Nothing. You planned I was just I, okay. as soon as I well, found I'm, out. And uh, and I thought I just I looked up some day in history and I just started, you know. Usually I can I can talk for an hour or so. Like I said, I've, I've done this you know a couple of times and I felt confident that well well we'll come up with something. I you know I, absolutely okay. I'm yeah so, no twenty five years of experience will will do that for you. But what a pleasant uh, surprise well, to know that you had planned everything out. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. He's been on the show. Uh, we, we always love having him. Nolan Rollins, he is an attorney. He is an entrepreneur. He is an activist. He is an all-around awesome, awesome guy. Good egg. And he always has, he always has amazing things to, to, to teach us and to talk about. And today is no different. So uh, welcome once again, Nolan. How are you holding up during all the heat? Uh, doing quite well. It, you, Bobby's right. Didn't get quite where we thought it was going to get, but um, you know we're we're built differently on this side of the world. So a little bit of discomfort goes a long way. But other than that, I can't complain. I cannot complain. <laughs> well, so what what is the burning question for today? Because you know I I I've, I've come to rely on your wisdom to sort of. Put your finger on on the pulse, you know. So what's 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 been burning up your brain lately? You know, it's 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 funny as we're starting to kind of transition out of this last year and a half, and really starting to think about what things look like going forward. I have spent really the last day or so in conversations where every part of the conversation started pre-COVID. We would do this. Post-COVID, we would do that. So what's really interesting to me is that is this one of those great big lines of demarcation like pre-Christ, post-Christ? Like, are we – like, is this that kind of thing that we're doing now and we'll, we'll wax eloquently about how things used to be while saying things are horribly now and going forward? So it, it's going to be really interesting because – Everyone that I've talked to over the last week or so, we've been having these real pre-COVID and post-COVID conversations, and um, they, it's dominated the subject matter. So I'm really wondering if, if that's going to be a real thing going forward and um, if that's, that's going to be the litmus test about how we think about time in this generation. What did you guys come up with? What did you think? Like, I just something very basic. I mean, I, I don't know how, how deep the conversation went, but I think – that Zoom uh, made a huge difference. I think a lot of companies are not going to request that their employees come in. I think that they can still have their conferences by Zoom. And I think uh, overall, a lot of people found it very, very convenient to do things by Zoom rather than, you know, at home, rather than drive out in traffic for an hour. It, you know, it, it's funny, Bobby, that you should bring up Zoom because I agree with you completely on the Zoom piece. And at the same time, I was having a conversation with uh, a neurologist, and she was talking about the long-term impacts of stand, uh, sitting in front of your computer, what it does to the brain, what it does to your eyes, and what that's going to look like over time. 
So it's a it's it's a really interesting thing. I mean, we've seen productivity things still moving. Lots of people closed down businesses, and you know, candidly, we're a technology company, and everybody's at home. Like we're we're a hardware company, and everyone's at home, and we're developing from home, and and spaces like that. So it's a really interesting thing, and I do think a lot of people are going to want to stay where they are, and um, work is going to look different going forward. But um, but we we have to figure out what these what the outcomes of some of this will actually be. So. There's always smart people out there, like a neurologist, who's saying, you know, well, what will that do to your neurosynapses and things like that? And then you got to Google that kind of stuff and look it up so you can have a real conversation. <laughs> I'm with doing it. that as we speak, sir. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, can we can we find find out the answer to that? So uh, while while Patty and, and Bobby are, are are looking that up frantically, um, I, I have a question too because if you look at history. Right. E- even the, the pandemic that happened 100 years ago, that this is, you know, continually been compared to. I don't think they used uh, Zoom back then, though. Oh, did no, they? They did. no, they did. To- no, they totally did. Was it? it was was just, uh, yeah, no, it was just it was just four had four legs and, and, <laughs> and a pigeon from one town to the other <laughs> right. really, really fast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but 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 my my question is, so if you look at if you look at that. It was it was worldwide, right? And it, it changed their society at the time pretty dramatically. Lots of people died, um, and it took about four or five years, uh, according to what I've read, to, for society to sort of return to what you would call the new normal or a normal. You know, uh, so we don't. We don't now, today, in 2021, we have forgotten that experience collectively as human beings. You know what I mean? We, we, you know, this didn't come up and, and all of a sudden we say, oh, well, you know, remember what we learned during, you know, during the, 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 the 1918 pandemic and, and let's, let's not panic or let's do, you know, let's learn from, from what they did. You know what I mean? None of that happened. None of it. So it washed away. It was washed away by time. So how long? I think the the more pertinent question was how long will will we be affected by this as a society? You know what I mean? Is it until we this generation dies out? You know what I mean? I don't know, uh, but I'm curious what what your thoughts are. You know, I think it's going to be some time because I actually think that, um, and you know, it, it's hindsight is always twenty twenty, and we look back. I think the world was a bit simpler then, just in terms of of what it looked like to move the world, what it looked like to move industry. But one really interesting thing is, I I think you're absolutely right. We completely forgot, and whatever muscle memory existed, we lost it because even the conversation about having masks was like this huge conversation and people for it or people against it. But when you looked back then and look at the pictures that actually exist, people are wearing masks. Like it was, so, you know, there's something, yeah, it's just something that we just should have spent a little time with history um, and, uh, and thought about it. But I do think that, that this time may take us relatively longer. And the reason for me that I think it's, it's, it's the world is a bit more complex in that it's, it's interconnectedness is unlike it's ever been before, right? Mm-hmm. So you, you didn't have a connectedness in the world then that you have now. So the question has become, how do you continue doing the work? I mean, when you think about some business travel, a lot of people are traveling globally for business. What does that now look like? What does that then look like for the airlines? What does that then look So there's just a myriad of things that, that whatever this new normal is going to be, the kind of infrastructure that, that existed pre-pandemic, and when I say infrastructure, I just mean planes flying, traveling, meetings, and all of those things that were just regular, it's going to look very different. And Um, I just think it's going to take us time to figure out where we're going to settle in. And the crazier thing is where we're going to settle in is going to be a globally dependent settling point. Like, I don't think it's just going to be an American settling point, which I think is going to be interesting. I will, we'll see how, how well we can cooperate with our friends around the globe. I think really interesting. I think that too. I think we're more progressive and more take care of things and invent and, and moving forward than they were back then. And, and you're right, I think because we're all interconnected in that way. But I mean, look at the thought process back then too, in the 40s or, or even in the, in the early 50s, 
television was just a fad, right? And the internet is something that's never going away. So it's all these things, I think, that we adapt and we move forward. And I think it's, it's all, it changes. I don't think it will just necessarily go away as just some incident necessarily. You know what I mean? I think there were things that came out of this that are going to stick around for a while. And we still don't know how it, how it's going to affect the younger generation either, right? We still don't know how, I mean, will it, will it roll off their shoulders? Will, you know, will, will this sort of, will we, to, to Nolan's point, will we be able to identify the kids who were of a certain age during this time? You know what I mean? That, that were deprived of their senior year or deprived of graduating college, you know what I mean? This sort of thing. Um, I, I, I'm I'm eager to see, not eager, but I feel like that's still to come. You know what I mean? What the, those long-term effects as well, which are hard to quantify. Yeah, I mean, I think if you, there's probably some really smart people who can look at kind of typical human transition points, and then look at the vulnerability of people in those transition points. So, you, for instance, the the kids who are who would have been in co- in high school this past year and now are going on to college. What does that right. year of them not being in school really mean for them? Or the right. year that the kids in middle school who are going to high school. So there there's some really interesting transition points that um, that I, I guarantee that in, in time that we look at them and study them and there's going to be a really interesting impact on. Um, on the individuals, but on society as a whole. Now, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I'm, I'm certain that there is some kind of impact that, as a collective group, we'll look back and say we can pinpoint that time as being a real catalyst, negatively or positively, for um, for those groups of people. What about your your personal life? Sorry, Chase. Um, your personal life, or or even in your you know, the people who you were talking to, uh, your firm, um, w- how has it affected you? Did, do you see some permanent changes coming from this? Yeah, I don't. So, you know, we have a, uh, a technology company, a hardware company, and I don't know that we go into an office anytime soon. Like, literally, you know, we'll jump into a lab to test our products and certain things like that, but I don't see us going into an office um really anytime soon. And then, you know, for me, when I go back to investors and we talk about kind of cost cuttings and how we're better using that, those dollars for R and D, those things begin to make a difference. They, they really do. And, and, and I don't know once you've tasted uh, kind of that, that sweet nectar of savings that can be used for something else that you would mm-hmm. wind up doing what you did in the past before. I, mm-hmm. I just think there, there's going to be an interesting hybrid, but I do think that, um, that from a business standpoint, it, it will not look the same. I think the we've we've come to realize that a lot of the overhead that that we used before um, didn't always translate into productivity in a way that's that's better than where we are right now. Now, are there still things to be figured out? Absolutely. Don't. I, I'm. This is absolutely not a panacea. We have. I think we have years to really figure it out. But I don't think that we walk backwards. Um, and also in, the, in our personal lives, I mean, I, I think even personal interactions look different. I mean, Jason and I, we had dinner not long ago, and it was sparse out. We kind of sat outside, and there were no people around. Like, it's, it's a really interesting mm-hmm. world that, um, that I think is going to take us some time to figure out how to navigate. And like you and I never had lunch. Right, so it's affected I, it, us, <laughs> Nolan. I think it, exactly in a way, and, and that hurts me the most. Like, does it? Does it? God bless you. You're just amazing. Hey, we need to take a quick break, Jace. If you want to take us out, and then we'll come right back with Nolan and and uh, wrap this up. You got it. Yeah, you're listening to Common Ground, and stick with us on KHCS 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. 
located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. When was the last time you had a business insurance checkup? That long, eh? It's most likely Glen Terry time for you and your business. Glen Terry has been a Santa Clarita resident since 1980 and has deep roots in the community. 22 years in the insurance industry, a trusted commercial insurance specialist with LBW, licensed in 50 states, there's nobody I'd trust more. Call Glen Terry today and set up your free business insurance checkup at 661-702-6005. Glen Terry sticks to the mission, not the co-mission. Yeehaw! No words can describe the power of belonging to a group of close friends or being part of a family. Insight Treatment Center was founded more than 20 years ago to give teenagers a community of friends and family as they overcome issues like depression, anxiety, and trauma. The new Santa Clarita location is a COVID-secure environment where distance and good airflow are a priority. As a leader in providing intensive outpatient treatment to teenagers, Insight Treatment Center in Santa Clarita is here to help. Call 888-295-9995 or go online to insighttreatment.com. I listen to it all day, every day. Hometown, your hometown station. And welcome back, everybody. It's 98.1 FM, 1220 AM, KHTS, 149, 88 degrees. Patty, if I'm getting ready to talk on the on the radio, I don't need you just blabbing away to me. Oh, we've got this much time left. Hey, when we come back. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have a radio show to do. Just trying to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Don't get in the way, Patty. Don't get in the way, Patty. Uh-huh. Apparently. He is out of control when you're not in here in the booth. I'm telling you. All right. So what, one more one more question for Nolan before we let him go, and, and we could, unless he wants to stick around and give uh, give Patty some some dating advice. Oh, um, <laughs> I just wondered if oh. if you guys also sort of had a list of goals during the pandemic, and have you know maybe accomplished a few of them, but not enough to just sort of feel good about yourself <laughs> you know what i mean um <laughs> do, do you know what i'm saying no and <laughs> okay so that was just me <laughs> I, had, I, started, I started out with this <laughs> i started out with this long list of, of things you know okay i'm get this is what i'm going to accomplish now with this stolen season oh um nolan no? how about you <laughs> so I'm on my own there if we're no, talking no, no, about no, long-term you, psychological effects you know what i mean yeah, no, you, you're, you're definitely not on your own. So uh, one of mine was definitely to work out more, and I can promise you I did not do it at all. Like I, I, every time I said, you know what, let's go do some push-ups, I found a reason not to go do some push-ups. So um, the, the physical ones didn't work, but I will say this, the mental ones worked for me because I spent a ton of time reading. Like I hadn't been able to read in forever so just reading Mm. really interesting things um and and candidly spending a little more time with um american history um which i I hadn't done in forever so so i think those things um for me were really good and and kind of i hope created some some pretty interesting new habits but uh the one that i can definitely say did not stick like a uh, new year's resolution was working out okay all right well let's um let's thank nolan as always thank you nolan <laughs> if you want to stick it around it came from my heart too minutes, by the way i don't know if <laughs> please feel free no nolan it was great to have you it was great to have you on the show nolan we really appreciate you coming on and um, I do. I, I really do love your perspective on things. I certainly appreciate it, Bobby, and I uh, love being on. And we, listen, we're not going to let COVID get us down when it comes to lunch. It's you and I, my friend. You and I. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Jason Downs. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> uh, all right, man. Thank you so much, and we will uh, we'll talk to you again. Absolutely. Have a great one, guys. All right. Bye, bye. All right, you too. Patty, oh, no. are you lonely? 
<laughs> don't answer that. Don't don't ask me that question. You know, have you ever seen when you look at people, there's little like little <laughs> verbs or adjectives or certain things above them. Like there's a, just a word above them, like a like a sim. I was character. I was literally about to say it's like the sim thing. For oh my the god, sims. were you? Yeah. So anyway, have you ever have you ever had Ouch. that happen to you? I look around the room. And there's not really anybody here because, you know, you're gone, Jason. Anyway. <laughs> there's, a, there's a new person here that's being trained on the board. It seems uh, quite lovely. You see, you know, a word. I can't say it over the air, just so you know. But it's a good word. Um, and then when I look at Patty, it just says lonely. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh my it's God. crazy. What's going on, little guy? Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, oh. oh. Do you think it's because you're afraid to to talk to them? Do you not have no. a line? No. It is, though, I feel. Oh, no. And Jason and I are here to help. God, no. Jason, what can we do I mean, so sure. that he's not afraid to go up to girls and, and say things to them? All right. Try, try this one out, okay? Oh, Lord. You must be tired. Because you've been running through my dreams all night. Yeah, yeah. Try that one. Just give it a try. Go ahead. <laughs> don't s- no. Don't look at me. <laughs> Do not look at me when you're saying that. What? Okay. Okay. No, it's okay. It's, he it's just looked play. at me roll with play. Bambi eyes <laughs> and was gonna repeat try, that. Try this one. Try this one. <laughs> Do you believe in love at first sight, or should I walk by again? Oh, they love yeah. That. They love. They love that one. That one works every time. Hey, we should rearrange the alphabet so we could put you and I together. Oh yeah. Where'd, oh, you, where'd you get these pickup lines from, Joey Tribbiani from Friends? <laughs> no, that's how you'd do one. Eh, that's that's a very good. specific that's one. That's accurate, actually. <laughs> Are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only ten I see. Oh, that's the one. I feel it. His eyes lit up. Someone, please help me. <laughs> I want oh, d- just. Just to be clear, we need to put a disclaimer here, Bobby. Yeah. Because <laughs> we actually would not recommend anyone using these. No, that's, <laughs> no I really that's, now. I don't know if that's true. I was just going to say this may not work for everyone. <laughs> if you want to use these, feel free. It just may not work for everyone. And I want this to be a goal that you need to use two of those lines this week. And then we want <laughs> progress. We want yeah, to know yeah. how it turned out and what she said. Okay, and okay. Here, here, here's a good one. Here, here, here's a good one. So write, write this. You, I know you're, you're writing not writing these down. These down. <laughs> I'm not I know, I know, I know, I know you're writing all these down. <laughs> okay, so you say, pardon, pardon me, Miss. I seem to have lost my phone number. Could I borrow yours? <laughs> I'll tell you right now that'd work on me. <laughs> but Bobby, do it in your voice, though. You know the 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 the, the soothing soothing voice. Oh, the soothing though. voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His father voice. <laughs> oh no no not the father one. no okay, never mind because if she's got dad issues then you know that's not that's not good i don't even want to go there so so okay so, so, let's so, say that you let's say and i know this isn't true but patty let's say you didn't like any of those say <laughs> let's pretend <laughs> for a moment that you didn't like any of those okay what, okay what would say, you use? say less what would you use uh, hi <laughs> Right, we're giving you some place to go with these. What would you do? What would you do? <laughs> Crickets. We're, exactly. He would just sit in the corner and giggle to himself. Question. He would not just sit. A rhetorical question. No. What would you? What would you say? Oh, you can't just sit in the corner and go, "Well, she's pretty." <laughs> <laughs> what am I goofy? Well, you're act- you're acting like it right now. <laughs> Gorge. Gorge. Come on, Pluto. Go say hi. <laughs> oh, my God. We've lost control, haven't we? Not really. Just uh, trying to ask you a question, buddy. What would you, you say? You? She walks in. She's a dream. What would you say? This is why you're single. <laughs> Stop laughing. He's just laughing. He's not doing anything. I don't know. This is going to take a while. Lord. It'll be an ongoing process. We've right? got to we'll... make him walk and talk like a regular gentleman. <laughs> we can hello, change hello. 
<laughs> okay. The rain in Spain falls mainly, mainly on the plane. <laughs> and it's plain right. to see that I'm the one for you. I just this made that is, up. This is going to be an ongoing project. It really is. We'll, 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 so so that, that's good. That's good. It'll, it'll, bring some, it'll bring folks back mm. again and again, like a cliffhanger, right? Yeah. So in the so, meanwhile, uh, don't get married until we can figure this out. <laughs> Say less. And in the meantime, uh, let's thank our sponsors one more time. We've got Denny and Company LLP, certified public accountants. They make your life less taxing. Reach out to Matt Denny for all your accounting needs at DennyLLP.com or by calling 661-286-8860. Denny and Company, they make your life less taxing. And also the law offices of Lou Espen. When experience counts, count on experience at EspenLaw.com. 35 years serving the Santa Clarita Valley and beyond. Lou specializes in bankruptcy, business law, commercial protection. Schedule a consultation with Lou today at EspenLaw.com or by calling 661-254-5050. Patty, is that your normal shade of red? or he's, he's actually turning red. Now, it's either because he's embarrassed or he just choked on his water. How, I about, can't... how about Uh-oh. both? How about both? Wow. Cute little guy. Here's... He's choking again. I'm telling you, this guy. So here's what you do. If you're in the bar, give me a call. We'll do a little Cyrano de Bergiac. Oh, there, I will, you, there you go. I yeah. will talk through the phone. Now, But you, here's the trick. You can't say, Bobby told me to ask you. No, this is all you. We're taking yeah. it out right now. I just want you to sit put, with that. Put one of your earbuds in your ear. You exactly. Know I mean? And then he can just... He can whisper the sweet nothings into your ear, and then you whisper the sweet nothings. Oh, God, this is going to be great. Okay, Jason, take us out, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you to Bobby Marqueso. Thank you to Patty, our beautiful engineer. And, of course, Jerry and Carl. We send them much love. And all the amazing folks here at KHTS. are a pleasure to have you on Common Ground with us where we can always agree on the important stuff. I'm Jason Downs, Bobby Marqueso. You're listening to KHTS. Until next time, stay safe, stay informed, and stay optimistic.